Well, hello tubers. Since the travel season is almost upon us and spring is nearly here, there's going to be about 20 million people come up to visit Canada. And most of them are going to be you Americans watching. And a few of you are going to have a problem with that American-Canadian border. So instead of you relying on some five-year-old video or something that your uncle told you, <laughs> I'm going to tell it to you straight. Because I cross that border all the time, done it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times all my life, and that border is almost like it's invisible. And I cross it like butter in both directions. And most importantly, this video is going to save you from potentially getting arrested and all the inconveniences of having to go to jail in a foreign country. And even more importantly, it will save you time, hassle, and money. So let's get started. Questions related to the Canadian-US border are the number one most common questions on my YouTube channel, probably because I have discussed it many times and many of you know I cross the border a lot. In fact, I've crossed the border so many times I have no idea how many times I have. And of course I've crossed into many countries at many airports too. But we're going to keep this conversation to Canada. Now first of all, let's talk about the whiners I get. And unless you actually make wine for a living, you shouldn't be a whiner. I inevitably get a lot of comments and complaints about Americans that have been rejected for crossing the border because they usually have no documents or they are inadmissible because of criminal activity. In fact, I believe in the last 10 years or so, at least 60 to 70,000 Americans have been deemed inadmissible. And the reason we don't allow convicted criminals in our country is because we got enough of our own. Thank you. And before I get the whiny comments, now remember, you actually have to make wine to be a whiner. Canadians actually have a harder time crossing into the U.S. of A. The standards for Canadians, and for that matter, nationals of other countries, to come to the U.S.A. are much more stringent than Canada applies to Americans. And as far as I'm concerned, every country in the world even the smallest ones, can decide who should be allowed in. It's like your home. Do you allow just anybody to come into your home? I don't think so. So when I see tourists up here in the summer and they got Alabama license plates, I know two things about them. One, they've been checked out and they're good to go to be in my country. And two, they're gonna spend money. And both of those things are good. I get so many crazy questions about the Canadian US border from strangers on my channel that many of them, especially the dumb ones, I have to ignore. For example, I'm not interested in helping you smuggle narcotics and or your criminal brother or your criminal mother across the border in either direction. I'm not interested, thank you. And when I get cryptic questions of, I'm just asking for a friend, uh, yeah, no, no, you're asking because you wanna smuggle some contraband one way or the other and I'm just not gonna help you with that, sorry. But today we're gonna talk about the three main issues that Americans get terrified about crossing the border. Yes, Alex, I'll take stupid border questions for 200, please. The three things we're really gonna be talking about are Dogs, guns, and criminal records. Those are the three things most people are concerned about when crossing the border. So let's talk about the dogs first. Most people want to travel with their dog or cat, for example. No problem. Easy to cross with them. Make sure they're vaccinated and you have proof. You don't need a microchip, none of that stuff. And we're talking rabies vaccination. Make sure you have that in a paper form that you can present to the Canada Customs Border Guard if they ask. Very simple, but if you're trying to cross with a bird or some other animal that is not a cat or a dog, you're gonna need a permit. I got one longtime viewer that he complains for this one time he got hassled because he tried to bring a bird across and he didn't have a permit and I never heard the end of it. So if you're crossing with your therapy bird or therapy sheep, you need a permit. Yes, you do. But for dogs and cats, good to go. So let's put this topic to rest. And 
don't believe what you have read. There are millions of guns in Canada and even millions of conservatives. The most ignorant that I talk to go, what, you got conservatives? I go, yeah, the Conservative Party of Canada. Didn't you realize we've elected many conservative prime ministers? So don't live in ignorance, folks. Yes, you can bring your gun, but you need a permit. That's it. And it's only certain types of weapons. Your handgun, if you want to bring that, you need to show that you're going to a competition. That's the only reason we're going to let you have your handgun. But you can bring a rifle. There are restrictions on the magazine size and the type of weapons you can bring. But many typical firearms that are just rifle, long rifles, we call them. Somebody's calling me. Because it's a complex answer, I'm going to put the link in the description below and you can go into the actual Government of Canada site and you can look up whether your gun is allowed into Canada or not and you only have to pay a small $25 fee to get the permit to bring your rifle along. And while I'm at it, I'm going to remind you, you can't shoot game without a license and that's a hunting license. Okay, so, so if you come across the border with a permit, with your rifle, and you see that beautiful elk or moose, don't be shooting it just because you think you can, because you're in Canada. No, you do need a hunting license from the jurisdiction that you will be in. And if you're not a local, you may actually need a guide or enter a lottery for a big game hunt. And lastly, let's talk about people with criminal records that want to come to Canada and get their butt hurt because we don't let them in. We actually do let criminals in. If you've had something minor like a simple marijuana possession charge and it's more than 10 years ago and you're no longer on parole or probation, you're deemed rehabilitated. Same with drinking under the influence, DUI, DWI, whatever you want to call it. If it's more than 10 years, you have no problem. And don't lie because they run your background. Everybody that comes into the country, including me when I come back into my own country, is checked for warrants and for missing persons reports and criminal history or terrorist watch lists. It's just the way it is, folks. Everything is computerized. So don't lie, because the moment you lie, your credibility is boop, out the window, and they're not gonna believe anything else that comes out of your mouth. My best and strongest advice for you to come to Canada if you have a criminal history of any kind and you're not sure, Canada has embassies and consulates in all the major cities. Off the top of my head, I'm going to list a city, the closest one to you. You can actually go visit them during business hours and discuss your situation, whether you need an advance permit permission to enter. We were young and foolish then. Oh, how I wish we could go back again. I've decided it's been too long, baby. Reaching out to touch your heart. Hope for a maybe I get a one way. And while we're at it, make sure all your children, because a lot of people are mixed families, divorced, things like that. Make sure you have a notarized permission from your ex-spouse or current spouse if you're not traveling with both parents and you have children along. Last thing you want to do is get questioned or arrested and they're thinking that you're actually abducting your child and you're involved in some weird custody case issue because you can't just willy-nilly move kids across borders without both parents consenting nowadays. So keep that in mind if you're transporting your friend's kids or children from a previous relationship or marriage. Now, I think we covered the basics here without me yattering and um and um and um like that other person does. So there's actually going to be some links in the description down below to the actual government websites where you can get the current and most recent information regarding the things that I've just mentioned. So in the meantime folks, stay safe and travel your damn ass off. Because as my favorite American once said, travel is fatal to prejudice. Thank you Mark Twain. Have a great time in Canada or wherever your travels will take you this summer, and I'll see you on the road. Bye-bye. required editing to make it suitable to be shown